Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what we know for sure is the FBI report uh, did not corroborate any of the allegations against Judge Kavanaugh. And the second thing we know for sure is that there's no way anything we did would satisfy the Democrats. Uh, they've always got a reason why the goalposts need to be moved uh, further down the field, farther down the field, and uh, nothing we could do would satisfy them. They're dug in. Uh, you've seen it uh, from the beginning. And with that, I want to turn it over to Chairman Grassley and the members of the committee who I think have done a, a really outstanding job. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Um, before I say a few words, uh, so I won't have to announce each person after me is going, in this order will be Hatch, Corn, and Lee, and Tillis. So please just come to the podium and say whatever you want to say, and then we'll take questions. Uh, this is the 87th day. Uh, that's three weeks longer than the average of the last three or four nominees to the Supreme Court. So don't tell me you haven't spent enough time. Also, I feel very good about where this nomination is right now. Now, I don't say that from the standpoint of counting votes. I say that from the standpoint of the qualifications of this candidate and the fact that those qualifications to be a Supreme Court justice based upon his 12 years on the D.C. Circuit without anybody finding any fault with his qualifications to serve there, but that hasn't been talked about much. Everything else. This person is very well qualified. A person that believes in the principles of due process, the presumption of innocence and readiness to serve are recognized. So Judge Kavanaugh should be confirmed on Saturday. Now, this started downhill very quickly on about July the 10th. When Schumer said that we're going to do everything we can to stop this nomination. And you can look back 87 days and you can see that everything but whether he's qualified to serve has been brought up. Brought up. I've tried to commit and I think I've carried out what I promised immediately that we were going to have a fair and thorough process. We have had a fair and thorough process, and I think that's best demonstrated by the fact that we, the minute I read about who the person was in the Feinstein letter, Dr. Ford, I read about her name in the paper. We got on it right away to provide the form she wanted, and in turn, we provided the same forum for Kavanaugh. But what I've been dealing with since July the 10th, the downhill slope that Schumer's put us on, is really dealing with the demolition derby. And we're, they just about destroyed a good person to be on the Supreme Court. So, uh, hopefully we're 48 hours away from having a new person on the Supreme Court. I certainly endorse everything that uh, the chairman of the committee has, has said. Look, I'm disappointed in my Democratic colleagues for what they're doing. There's no excuse for it, uh, but they're doing it. I'm grateful to the FBI for their efforts in doing a thorough, very important investigation. Many of us have said that if Judge Kavanaugh did what he's been accused of doing by some of the Democrats and outside people, some outside people, he should be disqualified. But after investigations from both the committee and the FBI, we have found nothing, absolutely nothing, to corroborate accusations against him. And we need to confirm him right away. His confirmation will be a victory for the Senate as an institution, a reminder that the politics of baseless personal destruction has no place here. I think he's one of the best nominees I've seen in my 42 years in the United States Senate. 
And I apologize to him for the way he's been treated. Yes, this is an important position. Yes, and Democrats have a right to feel very worried and upset about, about a Republican getting this seat because they thought they had won the election. But that isn't the case. And our side has handled this, I think, with discretion, handling every problem that has come up. And frankly, I hope we can just move forward and get this done. It's the right thing to do. Judge Kavanaugh is a great judge. He'll make a great justice on the United States Supreme Court. And I intend to do everything I possibly can to make sure he gets there as quickly as we can. Our friend, the um, senior senator from Minnesota, said about this confirmation process, she said, this is not normal. Well, I agree with her. Because if this is the new normal, woe be to the Senate and any nominee that would be subjected to the unacceptable character assassination that we've seen directed at this nominee in this case. If that's the new normal, I don't know who would want to serve, and frankly, I think people would be justified in losing any respect for the Senate and the way it conducts itself during the confirmation process. So more is at stake than just this nomination and the Supreme Court. The Senate itself is on trial here. A vote against Judge Kavanaugh tomorrow will be an endorsement of the mishandling of this confirmation process because of hiding relevant information that could have been examined on a bipartisan basis in a way that respected Dr. Ford's re request for privacy and um, gotten to the bottom of this as we have attempted to do now with 20 million people watching on television. A vote against Judge Kavanaugh tomorrow will be a, uh, a vote for abusing the confirmation process and a good person. And it will be a vote for the shameful intimidation tactics that have been employed as part of an orchestrated smear campaign. I agree that the FBI investigation, the, now they've talked to a total of 150 different people uh, through the seven background investigations that Judge Kavanaugh has been through since 1993. Uh, no corroboration, no confirmation of any of these outrageous accusations that have been made against him. Unfortunately, this could have all been avoided. Um, most of the uh, embarrassment to Dr. Ford and, and the public circus-like atmosphere, if we had just, if the ranking member had just made the allegations known in the regular process and could have been investigated, and, as I said, in a way that would have protected her and her confidentiality. I've said before, and i say it again, I believe that we should and we did treat Dr. Ford the same way I would want my daughters or my wife or my mother treated under similar circumstances. But we have to remember that Judge Kavanaugh is entitled to a fair process too. And he has not been subjected to a fair process, anything but. So now's the time to quit all of these antics, these hijinks, this circus-like atmosphere, and we'll do that tomorrow morning when we vote and Saturday when we vote to finally confirm uh, this good man to this important position. The process of reviewing the FBI reports that we received this morning uh, has been exhaustive. It, it, it has been a collaborative process with my colleagues. It, it occurred in a classified environment because these are documents that we're not allowed to, re to disclose to the public. Uh, but because we can review them in only one place, we reviewed them together and we stopped and we talked about each point made to make sure that we understood uh, the, the message from each interview and each report. Uh, although that part of it, by operation of law, is not allowed to be public, I want to give you the assurance that we treated these documents just as we've treated each and every allegation with utmost seriousness, with a desire to do nothing more than search for the truth. And just as we've spent hours upon hours hearing testimony in, in open 
uh, hearings before the public. We've also spent hours upon hours reviewing these documents in a classified environment. Allegations of sexual misconduct are serious, of sexual assault are of a most serious nature, and always have to be treated with utmost seriousness. They have been in this case. Again, this is someone who has been through seven background investigations in the course of the last three decades, with over 150 people interviewed with regard to him. This is a man of outstanding character who has lived an exemplary life. He and his family have been subjected to a lot of questioning, a lot of embarrassment, a lot of humiliation in recent weeks. That has been a difficult part of this process for him. But in the process of doing that, he's proven his character and his willingness to be candid with the public and even sharing facts that are at times uncomfortable. I'm convinced of this man's character, of his truthfulness, of his qualifications to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. I wholeheartedly support his confirmation and look forward to voting for him in the coming hours. Well, uh, I agree with everything my colleagues have said. I, I also want to say that Dr. Ford, I firmly believe, experienced a traumatic event in her life. I just also believe that there's no evidence that we've seen through the FBI background checks, through the time that we've uh, spent in the hearing, um, to substantiate that these claims are properly alleged and, and directed towards Judge Kavanaugh. Thousands of pages in that briefing room, Mike, or Senator Lee and I were in that room together for an hour. We braked for an hour, then we were all back for two hours. Um, at the desk is also some 1,500 pages that document the prior FBI background investigations. And in none of those was there any reference, and, and keep in mind, this goes back 23, 24 years. This would have only been six or seven years after he was out of college. Certainly, if it was in recent memory, you would have seen some whiff or some suggestion, and yet there was none. The, other, the last thing I'll leave you with is it, it appears as though since one of the tacks that some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, have taken here is not working, they're not really substantiate, able to substantiate the allegations, now they've moved to this narrative of the way he behaved in the hearing last week uh, was somehow putting to question his judicial temperament. In the 31 hours that he was before the Judiciary Committee, I saw Judge Kavanaugh. He was extremely patient with unfair questions, being cut off, but he maintained his poise throughout those 32 hours with very few breaks. Last week, I saw Brett Kavanaugh. I wasn't judging him as a judge. I was judging him as a human being who's having his life destroyed before his very eyes, having his 13-year-old daughter heartbroken and having his wife issue death threats. And I would defy anyone in this room, if they thought, if they had gone through that same experience, if you wouldn't have had those same emotions. And yet, over the course of that testimony, nearly two hours, I think he composed himself and did a good job in answering the questions and defending his good name. Uh, we're ready for questions. Direct them to whoever you want to answer. Can you explain to us how you came up with your list of who should be interviewed by the FBI? Uh, I think I'll let you do that because you were at the same meeting I was at. Uh, we did not come up with a list of uh, people who the FBI should interview. The FBI was requested to conduct an investigation into any and all credible current accusations of sexual misconduct by Judge Kavanaugh, and the FBI made the decision uh, from there as to who to interview. So then as a follow-up to that, why not have the FBI interview people in whom Christine Blasey Ford confided in over the years? Aren't those kinds of conversations usually key to sexual misconduct? Yeah, I think I, I, uh, they did, and uh, I think I answered your question. Uh, our request was to the White House. The White House then made the request of the FBI to conduct a supplemental investigation into current credible accusations of sexual misconduct. They did that. Senator, 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 Boy, uh, just to be clear, that we did not give them a list of people and only these people they can speak with. We went back to have them go back and to those who issued statements, speak with them. But a part of the protocol when you do a, a criminal background investigation, is there anyone else I should speak to? 
And in fact, when they went through that, they identified some others who hadn't put forward statements before. We saw that in the record this morning. Sir, the question is the attorneys have said specifically that there's eight additional witnesses interviewed. And Deborah Ramirez's attorney said there could be 20, there should be an additional 20 witnesses interviewed. Potentially people could corroborate these accounts. Why not green light the FBI, tell the White House to green light the FBI, and, and interview light. these additional witnesses? The FBI has gotten all the all the uh, permission they need in order to interview whoever they think is necessary. There has been no one to corroborate any of the allegations made by Dr. Ford or by Ms. Ramirez, and uh, the FBI has reported that back to us. They have followed additional leads, but the whole purpose of this is delay. This is not a search for the truth anymore. It became clear early on when this uh, allegation by Dr. Ford was hidden from the committee and handled in such an extraordinary way against her wishes and without her consent. This is a search and destroy mission. This is not a search for the truth. We've done everything we can to treat both Judge Kavanaugh and Dr. Ford fairly and treat all allegations made seriously that's been exhaustively studied by the FBI as well as Judiciary Committee staff. There really isn't anything else. The President has said that there shouldn't be even a little doubt. Given the fact that the accuser accusers are suggesting that there are additional people who could corroborate their stories, are you confident that you have eliminated any cloud of doubt? All of the people identified by Ms. Ramirez and Dr. Ford have testified contrary to the way Ms. Ramirez and Dr. Ford have alleged. And so the witnesses they have identified saying they were present at the event have all refuted their allegation. So I think that ought to settle it. Yes, 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 yes. You've already referred some, some charges to the DOJ regarding uncorroborated allegations. I'm wondering, will the committee take any kind of action against the attorneys for Dr. Blasey Ford? Uh, we don't prosecute. Or we, will you refer them to the ABA? Uh, right now, I'd say I, I don't know, and I don't know if there's any reason to. I think that what I'd like to do when we get all done, because this is almost rock bottom, I would like to have the future mending things mm -hmm so we can do things in a, a collegial way that the United States Senate ought to do, and particularly when it comes to Supreme Court nominations. And you folks can have something to do with this. Now, I would never use the word fake news. I consider you folks policemen for our de democratic system of government. But I want to show you where some of you have bias. I've had uh, demonstrators in my office uh, for two weeks now, both for Kavanaugh and against Kavanaugh. And uh, one time, the people that were for Kavanaugh wanted to be interviewed. And they said, we only we we're only interested in view interviewing people against Kavanaugh. Now, is that, that's a bias that none of you should be proud of. Chairman Grassley, Dr. Ford's, uh, legal, team, Dr. Ford's legal team has sent a letter to the FBI, and they're characterizing this investigation as a stain on the process on the no. FBI and on our American ideal of justice. What's your response to that yeah, I'll give you, let the FBI do what the FBI is hired to do and keep political interference out of it. And my uh, making a call to the FBI that you ought to do something is political interference. I made no call to the FBI uh, since this whole process started a week ago. And I'm not going to. I never had any conversation with anybody in the White House because I got confidence in the FBI. They go where the facts lead them. Well, I, 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 thought, I think it's also important to consider the source. This is a legal team that when we formally communicated on more than one occasion that we would come to California and have a confidential interview and, and, and on her terms, uh, from Dr. Ford to testify she wasn't aware of that really makes me wonder the competency of the, the uh, folks that she has advising her. The either, either the competency or the political bias that they have. Well, of course, none of us can, uh, none of us have that perspective yet. But I hope what history documents is that what I said earlier, that we, once we learned of her identity, once her name was leaked 
contrary to her wishes and without her consent uh, to the public. And she was forced to tell her story, not in a safe, confidential setting, but in a circus-like atmosphere. Uh, I hope we did the best we could under those awful set of circumstances to treat her with respect and dignity and listen to her. But that doesn't mean that uh, we forget our basic concepts of fair play and constitutional due process. That's why we've tried to interview every witness that has any alleged uh, knowledge of relevant facts. And um, because we believe we're a country that believes in the presumption of innocence and due process of law. And what we know now is there is no corroboration. No one confirms the allegations of Dr. Ford, even people she identified as being present at the scene. So I believe we've done the best we could under these circumstances, given the incredible mishandling of, of Dr. Ford's allegation by the uh, ranking member on this Judiciary Committee to try to treat everybody fairly. But it's time now to vote, and that's what we're going to do starting tomorrow morning. Hold on. Anybody on the back row? I want to say something. I want to say something before you ask your question. As someone who actually tried cases in the federal court system, and in front of two of the most notorious judges in the history of our country, and one case is in front of them, by the way, I want you to know I take this stuff very, very seriously. And I don't know that I've ever seen anybody who would exceed Judge Kavanaugh as a judge in the federal court system. And I personally resent the calumny that's been heaped upon him. It just isn't right, it isn't fair, and it sends a message to everybody that do you really want to take a federal judgeship in the future. Now this is just wrong. And unfortunately there are some people who just don't care. And they know that these judges on the Supreme Court are going to handle very, very difficult issues. And I'm sure that, that when the judge is there on the Supreme Court, he'll decide issues that will terribly disappoint Republicans and maybe terribly disappoint Democrats from time to time. But I know one thing. He's honest, and he will decide cases based upon the law, and he'll do a good job in doing it. That's one reason why we feel so deeply about this. And frankly, I resent this business of taking on anybody that is from the Republican Party or the Democratic Party for a federal judgeship. It's really irritating. As though these people who have spent a lifetime getting AV ratings, the highest rating you can have from the, from the uh, chief rating service of, uh, of attorneys in this country, I know a little bit about that. I have the highest rating you could possibly have, both here in Utah and back in Pennsylvania. These are important things to me. When I got out to practice law in Utah, I was told by everybody that Judge Willis Ritter was a curmudgeon that you really had to watch. Well, I got along well with Judge Ritter. He just wanted you to be competent when you went to court. On the other hand, he was biased. There's no doubt in my mind. This is an important position, and this man is qualified. And to put him through this type of a mess just because they are unhappy that Donald Trump had the right to appoint him is just plain wrong. And I got to say that I'm proud of my colleagues for standing up on this issue, and we ought to all be standing up on these issues. What we want is we want competent federal judges who are not biased, who basically will, uh, will abide by the laws themselves. And this man is one of those Hold people. up. Hold up. Last question. Um, you all, the, the Democrats say one thing after they make this report, and you all say another. Will the public ever get any sort of a view or any sort of a summary of what this report says? Uh, tell her about sure. the rule. Well, the, <laughs> sure. Uh, it was very clear to us in the memorandum of 2009 between Obama and Chairman uh, Leahy that, uh, that uh, there's one document, no copies made, uh, and, uh, and not uh, released to the public. Uh, so we can't do that. Now, there's some suggestion the White House can do it. 
But you're going to have to go to the White House to get that answer to your question.